morning to you viewers out there, to you parents and especially to you students. I want to welcome you to the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy e-learning program. I am Ian Beckers and I will be taking you through a maths lesson on measurement. It is hoped at the end of the lesson we're going to achieve three objectives. The first one, we're going to look and see how do I convert between the different linear units of measurement. Our second objective is that, we, of course, we know in the exams to come that most problems are worded. We're going to look at worded problems and see how best we can convert these units. And the last objective for this session is to demonstrate an appreciation. It is hoped that at the end, you boys and girls, even parents at home, even all the viewers will demonstrate an appreciation to understand or to see the importance of converting between these units. Now look at the screen in front of us. And just imagine that you hired a tiled man. And the room to be measured or the room to be tiled, the length is in meters. However, he has purchased tiles that are measured in centimeters. What must he do? Can he do that? Boys and girls, can he tile that room that is measured in meters with tiles that are measured in centimeters? To think about that. Next one, the gentleman on the right, his son is now 17 years of age. And he has to go for his identification card. He took the measurement, the height of that boy, and the unit of measurement that he used was in meters. However, it has to be converted or changed to centimeters. How will he do that? And let's look ahead and see. But before we even do those steps, the conversion, we're going to look at the basic unit of linear measurement that we will encounter at the primary school and sometimes even at the secondary level. The first unit of measurement is what is known as the millimeter. Now the millimeter is the smallest unit of measurement that can be used if you are going to measure a particular object. For example, you have, you have this ruler in front of you. I'm going to identify where exactly the millimeter is and when are we going to use it? When is the most appropriate time? Now, let's say we have an eraser and you want to measure the width of or the thickness of that eraser. We're going to use the millimeter. And let me explain why. Now, if you look in front of you, the eraser is not quite on one. It is somewhere between one and these small strokes is what is known as the millimeter. The millimeter are the lines between each number. And you can see between 0 and 1, there are many strokes or many millimeters. Between 1 and 2, there are many millimeters. And so the, when, when do I use millimeter is when I am going to measure the, or, or take the size of an object that is very small. Now, the next unit of measurement, and by now, you may know it, is centimeter. Now, the centimeter is used to measure objects that are fairly larger in size than the millimeter. And of course, we are familiar with the centimeter ruler. Most of us in schools use that on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a small ruler, uh, as seen in front here. And for instance, when would I use, when is the most appropriate time to use a centimeter? We have a pencil. And if I want to take the length of that pencil, it is most appropriate to use centimeter. Now, the measurement of this pencil is four centimeters. It is from zero here to all the way to four. Now, if you look between zero and four, there are several millimeters. And if, I'm asked, if I ask you the question, how many millimeters would I use millimeters, you may say it might be tedious. What about if it was 50 centimeters, it would have been tedious for you. And so to measure a pencil, maybe even the teacher's desk or even your own desk, you're going to use centimeter. Now the third unit of linear measurement is the meter. And of course the meter, as you know, is used when we are measuring an object that is larger or a distance that is larger than the centimeter. Now we are all familiar with the basketball court. We all know it. And let's just say someone gives you the task to use the ruler, a centimeter ruler, a standard centimeter ruler, 
to measure the basketball court. Do you think it's going to be easy? Some may say yes. But it's going to be a little bit challenging. Imagine you taking a millimeter and using that to measure the basketball court. You will realize it's going to be very tedious. And so the most appropriate unit to use is the meter. I look on the screen in front of you. Now the basketball court, believe you me, that it will take approximately 126 of those rulers, centimeter ruler, to measure the basketball court. I look at the ruler here. However, if you use meter, it's going to only take approximately 15. And let's transfer that from the basketball court into track and field. And we all are familiar with the race. It's a 100 meter race, a 200 meter race. And the reason why they call it 100 meters is because the distance is in meters. And imagine you taking a ruler, a centimeter ruler to measure that distance. It's going to be much difficult. And so the appropriate unit to measure distances or objects that are larger than centimeter is the meter. Our final unit of linear measurement for this session is what is the kilometer. And of course, the kilometer is used, as in front of you, to measure long distances. For example, the map of Tobago that is in front of you. Let's just say someone asks you to measure the distance from Scarborough to Charlottesville or back. And they said, OK, we're going to be precise. By the Port Mall in Scarborough, they gave you a centimeter ruler. And they ask you, the opinion, and they ask you to take a measurement in centimeters from Scarborough right up to Charlottesville. And by the way, you me, by the time you get to KFC, which is in, still in Scarborough, you're going to fed up. You want to be fed up. If you ask the meter, if you take the meter, they ask you, okay, Use the meter ruler to measure the distance from Scarborough to Charlottesville. Again, it's going to be tedious. And so the most appropriate or suitable unit to measure long distances is what is known as the kilometer. In fact, from Scarborough to Charlottesville is 43 kilometers. And if you were to convert that to meters, you're going to realize it's over maybe 4,000 plus. And if you were to convert that or change that to centimeters, you're going to realize how difficult it is. Boys and girls, all the viewers at home, before we know to convert, these are the four basic linear units of measurement. The millimeter, the smallest, the centimeter, the meter, and lastly, the kilometer. Now the question has to be asked, how do I convert from one unit to another? Ah. Now, the way or this approach that I'm going to be using today, there are several out there, boys and girls, and I'm not here to change your view. I am not here to say this is a better way. I'm not here to say this is the best. But for those students who are going to do that exam on August the 20th, and I wish you all, all the Lord's blessing, for those who have not gravitated or grasped how do I convert from meter to centimeter or vice versa? You have another chance. And pay attention. One more chance. Now we're going to use what is called the steps. S-T-E-P-S, steps. And we all are familiar with this step. We're going to call this step the measurement conversion step. And as we interact with other steps, you're going to realize that we're going to just put the acronym MCS, the Measurement Conversion Step. Now, very simple. There's a saying that goes, a picture tells a thousand words. Well, we're going to look at this step. We're going to see if we can appreciate this step, and we're going to use it to convert from one unit to the other. Now, at the bottom of this step is the smallest unit of measurement. What do you think will be on that step? And if you say millimeter, then you are correct. The millimeter goes at the bottom, followed by the centimeter, and then the meter. And lastly, you know, yes, the kilometer. Good. Now, very important, and I want you to observe carefully. With other approaches, they will not tell you why you get the answer or how you get the answer. But this will tell you why and how. 
Now, between the millimeter and the centimeter is 10, and I'm going to give you five seconds. Tell me why do you think that the number 10 is between millimeter and centimeter? Think? Good. And if you see that there are 10 millimeter that makes one centimeter, then you are correct. And so the number 10 goes in between 10 of these millimeter will make one centimeter. Who could tell me what number will go between centimeter and meter? And if you say 100, then you are correct. Because 100 centimeter is equal to one meter. And of course, we know by now, and if you did not know, then a 1,000 meters will make one kilometer. Look at it carefully. So we have... 10 millimeter makes 1 centimeter. You put the number 10. 100 centimeters make 1 meter 100. And 1,000 meter make 1 kilometer. Now, math is not only about problem solving. Math is not only about critical thinking. Math requires what is called observation. Tell me what you observe about these three numbers. Watch at it carefully. What do you observe? And if you are to, I'm hearing that some person is saying that there are multiples of 10, then you are correct. And what I mean by multiples of 10 is that 10, I have the number 10. 10 times 10 or 10 multiplied by 10 will give me 100. And 100 multiplied by 10 will give me 1,000. In addition, if you said, so, you know what I realize? That as the numbers go up or as the step goes up, the zeros increase. So we started one zero. Then we go to two zeros, and we go to three zeros. Good. And so the last thing about this step, and I want you to appreciate it and look at it. Now, if I ask the average student, is it difficult? Which one is more difficult? Is it climbing this step, ascending that step, or descending the step or running down the step? And I'm sure most of you will say it's going to be more difficult to run up this step. I'm going to use that understanding and transfer it to the maths. Out of division and multiplication, which one would you say more difficult? And I am sure most of you out there will say division. And so look at this step. Now, as you go up this step, as you ascend that step, the operation that we're going to use is divide. Good. And as you descend or come down this step, what operation? The opposite of divide is multiply and dear boys and girls dear parents dear all viewers this is what is known as a measurement conversion steps it has the millimeter it has the centimeter the meter the kilometer it has the units 10 100 and a thousand and of course don't forget when you are ascending this step or going up this step you divide when you are descending or come down this step you multiply boys and girls take one minute, I just observe this step because we're going to use this step to change from one unit to the other. Go to take your pencils and a copy book and draw this step and we're going to use this knowledge or this picture in order to solve our mathematical questions. Ten seconds, draw it quickly. Good, are we on five, four, nice. So we're gonna move on and let's use this step to convert this problem in front of us. We are gonna change 50 millimeter and we are gonna change that to centimeter. Now of course we know the word change, what is change? But to make it simpler to apply this to the step, the change means what step you are going to start on. And of course, the two means what step you're going to end up on. Good. Now, I have this some 50 millimeters to centimeters. And let me explain this even before I go on. In your test, in the C exam, you must do measurement. There are some things that must come. If you go into that room on August the 20th and there is no measurement problem, then something is wrong. And so focus. 
Now, of course, the first thing we're going to do, we have the problem. You draw out the step. Good. The first thing we're going to do is identify the steps you're going to begin on. You, our step is the millimeter step. We are beginning on the millimeter. Good. And of course, next one is where are you going to end up on? Locate the step that you are going to land on. You are going to be landing on the centimeter. Good. And we're going to show it out in a, in a while. Our third step, and if you picture it, we are starting on the millimeter, which is at the bottom. And then you are going to the centimeter step, so you are climbing that step. Tell me, boys and girls, what operation would I use? And if you say, think about it, you are climbing, it's harder. And if you say we are going to divide, then you are correct. We are going to divide. So our third thing is to decide what operation we're going to divide. And of course, we're going to perform the operation. We're going to evaluate. And so let's take this step now. And let's do it. Let me erase all these lines so that it makes it clearer for you boys and girls and viewers to see. Good. So let's go. So the problem is 50 millimeter to centimeters. And of course, you have already drawn your steps. And you have all of these here. Good. And let's do it practically now. I am on the 50 mil, I am on the millimeter step. I am right here, and you're going to see it now. Good. Where do I want to go to, boys and girls? I want to go to centimeters. I am here. What am I doing? Am I going up or am I going down? Yes, follow the arrow. We are going up. And if I'm going up, what will I do? I have to divide. No, yes, son. What do I divide by? Do I divide by 10? Do I divide by 100? Do I divide by 1,000? I am going to divide by 10. Why by 10? Because look where the 10 is, between here and here. And in fact, 10 millimeter, you make one centimeter, so I will divide. And let's go into the working now. So my response is going to be 50 divided by 10. And for you boys and girls who don't quite know how to divide, I can do it two ways. 50 divided by 10, I cross my zero, my answer is gonna be five centimeters. Or, there's also another way, if I have 50, and I always tell my students in school, that of course, whenever you have a problem with dividing by the tens, the hundred, the thousand, I go one step backward. And so if I put my point here and I go backward, I will have the same answer. 55 five centimeters. And then let's show it on the screen. I did this some for you, but let's show you that on the screen and just to erase this. And so converting or changing 50 millimeters to centimeters, of course, we divide by 10, and my answer is 5 centimeters. Now, as any good teacher, one example will not be sufficient. So let's look at another one. And of course, it's going to be faster because by now, you will start to appreciate why we need to do that conversion and how we're going to do it. Our next question is going to be, Change 15 meters to centimeters. And of course, we know we have to identify the step you're going to begin on. We are going to be beginning on the meter step. Good. So in front of your book, you have the step already there. And of course, we're going to locate where you're going to end on. We are going to end on the centimeter step. And of course, if you remember, from meter to centimeter, question, am I going up or am I going down? And of course, you realize the meter has a higher value, so we are on top of the step. We are descending or going down. What operation would I use? Of course, we multiply. Good. And we're going to evaluate. We're going to perform the operation. And let's go. So the step is already there now. I am on the meter step. Look at it. I am on the meter step. Good. And of course, where are we going, boys and girls? Yes, we are going to centimeters. So we are going down. 
And of course, if we are going down, we are going to multiply. Think about it. What are we multiplying by? Am I multiplying by 10? Am I multiplying by 1,000? Am I multiplying by 100? I'm giving you time to think. Good. And if you are saying we are multiplying by 100, then you are correct. And why? Because 100 is between the centimeter and meter. And so we're going to multiply by 100. 15 times 100. And all we do when we are multiplying by these units, 15 multiplied by 100. I put the number 15. How many zeros? Two zeros. I add the two zeros. My answer is 15. 1500 centimeters. Again, the first thing we did is to locate the step that we are going to be on, which is meter. Where are we going to? We are going to the centimeter step. We are descending, so we multiply. And of course, we multiply by 100. And so my answer is 1500 centimeters or 1500 centimeters. And by now, we're getting it. I know we are getting it there. Last thing. That's one more example to see, to make sure that every single one of you all understand it. Now we are on 14 kilometers to meters. I'm going to give you this time. You know this step. Do it. 14 kilometers to meters. And of course, we know we have to identify the steps. Good. Which is the kilometer step. We're going to locate where we're going to end on. And we are ending on the meter step. And of course, visualize it. Where is that kilometer? It's the highest point. And so we need to go down that step. So the operation we're going to do is multiply, as we know. And of course, we're going to do the operation. And let's do the picture now. And yes, I'm on kilometer step. Yes, good. And it is circled in green, and you are seeing it right here. And we are descending that step, of course. And so we are going to the meter step. And now we have to multiply. Multiply by now, after three examples, multiply by a thousand. Good. And so it is 14 multiplied by a thousand. And my answer, let me see if you can do it. I'm just trying to erase this line. Nice. 14 times 1,000. And for those of you who say 14,000, then you are correct. 14, and I'm adding my three zeros. One, two, three. My answer is 14,000 meters. And boys and girls, what you would have done there, what we would have done together, is use the steps, the measurement conversion steps, to change or convert from one particular unit to the other. Now, if we, if we go back to the objectives, we realize that on one of the objectives, we are supposed to do worded problems. And I always tell my students, you will not be going into the exam and face numbers. Most of your questions, out of 45 questions, about 37 of them may be words. And so we're going to use that. Even though it is worded, we are going to use the steps to simplify it and do the problem. So our first worthy problem is we have a flag. Good, and the flag, look at it, a rope attached to a pulley located at the top of the flag post or pole is used to raise a flag. If the height of the flag post is 3.5 meters, look at there from the ground, choosing the color, Nice. From the ground to the top is 3.5 meters. Good. High. And the flag is 176 centimeters above the ground. What is the remaining length needed for the flag to reach the top of the flagpole? And I put the two mask question because it came straight from a booklet. Now, the first thing you're going to realize is that you have 
two different units. You have the meter unit, 3.5 meters. And the next unit, you have 176 centimeters. There is nowhere on this earth where you can operate this question successfully with those two units that are different. And so we need to bring the units to the same. And that's what we have been doing whole morning, making the units the same. We are going to change that 3.5 meters to centimeters. And of course, when you change it, we're going to return, read the question with the centimeter measurement and see if it's going to be easier. And of course, if I go think about it, we are on the meter step. Good. So we are changing. Bear in mind, we are changing this. Eh? We are changing this unit to centimeters. So where am I on this step? Of course, I'm going to be on the meter step. Where am I going to? The centimeter step. I'm going down. And so I'm multiplying, multiplying by 100. Good. And so it is 3.5 multiplied by 100. Some students stress. They get a nervous breakdown when they see decimals. Uh, very straightforward. If you will realize when we are multiplying by 10, we move forward 1. Multiply by 100, two places, 1,003. And so this 3.5 is now move forward two places, one, two. And so my answer in essence is 350 centimeters. And so that 3.5 meters using this step gave us 350 centimeters. Let's see if I call it good. 350 centimeters. And what we're going to do now, we're going to return and read the question with the centimeter measurement now. And so the question reads now, a rope attached to a pulley located at the top of a flagpole is used to raise a flag. If the height of the flagpole is no longer 3.5 meters, but now 350 centimeters, good. And the flag is 175 centimeters above the ground. What is the remaining length needed to reach the, the, the pool? So in other words, from the bottom to the top, and you're going to see it on the pictures coming up here, from the bottom to the top is now 350 centimeters. Good. And of course, from the ground to the bottom of the flag is 176 centimeters. The question asks, how much more centimeters would I need from here to the top, or from yes, to reach the top. And of course, if you say that, look, it becomes simpler now. 350 centimeters from the ground to the top. Oh, let me change this. From the ground to the top. And from the floor, the ground is 176 to the bottom of the flag. Tell me. What's the balance from here to the top? And of course, if you are at home saying, take away, then we are correct. So the remaining length needed for the flag to reach the top is 350 minus or take away 176 centimeters. My answer is 124 centimeters. And what we did is that we took a word problem with two different units. We make it into the same unit, and then we perform the sum. And the final question for this session, final one, boys and girls, final one, viewers, problem number two. Let's try this one. A giraffe is 3.75 meters tall. If the buffalo below is 90 centimeters shorter than the giraffe, how tall is the buffalo in centimeters? And let's read it again. And tell me the first thing you observe. A giraffe is 3.7 meters tall, and it is clear here. The buffalo below is 90 centimeters shorter than the giraffe. How tall is the buffalo in centimeters? And of course, we know for a fact by now that the units must be changed to the same. It is no longer possible, or it was never possible to do the two units that are different. So we make the meter to the centimeters. And let's see how we do that. Again, by now, we are familiar with these steps. 
And we use that step, and again, we are changing the meter to the centimeters. And so we are on the meter step right here, which is identifying. And then we are going towards the centimeter. We're going to locate that to the centimeters. And of course, we are descending this step. We know we have to multiply, multiply by 100. And so our, our sum, and let me just erase this here. Our question, and the 3.7 meters, and just a pictorial representation, the buffalo is 90 centimeters shorter. And so let's do the working. It is 3.7 meters based on the step multiplied by 100. And of course, 3.75 multiplied by 100. Of course, we know we're going to go forward two places. One, two. And so my answer, my measurement for this giraffe is 375 centimeters. Now, think about it. If the giraffe is 375 centimeters instead of 3.75 meters, so it is now 375 centimeters. And the buffalo is 90 centimeters shorter than this. Then what's the height of the buffalo? And of course, we know we take away 375, take away 90. And so the buffalo's height is 285 centimeters. So boys and girls, we have come to the end of a very interesting lesson. And of course, we need to recap what was done. The first thing we looked at is the four basic linear units of measurement, and we know by now it began with the millimeter, which is the smallest, then it went to the centimeters, the meter, and then the kilometer. We know by now when to use these four. In addition to that, we went on to use the steps in order to convert or the change from one unit to the other. And of course, we know this step as the measurement conversion step. And of course, you know what the steps entail. And I'm saying, boys and girls out there, if you know the step, then every single problem becomes easy. You now know why we are going to, how many millimeter we make a centimeter. It's, a pluck, it's applicable. And of course, the steps is outlined for you. The millimeter, the centimeter, the meter, the kilometer. We have all the units, the 10, the 100, the 1,000. And of course, when you go up, you divide. When you come down, you, you multiply. And lastly, we cannot, and I stress, we cannot live a life without understanding these basic units. Sometimes we take it for granted as seen by the tile man, as seen by the father in the picture, the second slide. So we need to understand and appreciate the importance of knowing how to convert. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Division of Education innovation and energy for giving me this privilege to use this platform to teach you students, to teach you guys out there the importance of converting and how we change or convert from one unit to the other. Of course, in the remaining segments, which is going to be two, we're going to use these same steps. And of course, the unit is going to be different to teach weight and mass and then volume. I want to say thank you and see you guys in the upcoming segments.